Hi, everybody. I'm Mary Ann I'm from the city of Victoria, and I'm also a Capital Regional District Director. And I, last year I was here talking to you about how the city was dealing with its homelessness issues and housing. And this year I want to uh, tell you a little bit about a project that the city's been working with where we convinced the Vancouver Island Health Authority to do something we actually wanted them to do that they didn't, which is pretty amazing considering, as I'm sure most of you know, the health authorities never do anything they don't want to do. So what we did was we had to turn our heads to how to get out of a box. We wanted to make sure that in addition to the stuff that we usually did around land use planning and all that sort of service delivery, that we wanted to be able to actually work with another agency and really have them solve one of our problems. And the problem that we, was look we were looking at were how to create better services for a very small population of people who live mostly in our downtown core who are homeless but also have multiple addiction issues. And we called them the hardest to reach. We wanted the health authority to do what we couldn't, so we wanted them to do it even though we couldn't. And we essentially sat down with them and said, uh, we know that we will all benefit if you guys get your act together and take all of the services that you have and combine them in a better way. So we essentially sent a counselor so that the health authority would understand this wasn't about operations but more about politics. We threw everybody in a room uh, from the health authority, from the service providers, from the users themselves, from a variety of different uh, interests around the region and some of these people had never been in the same room together which was kind of horrifying. And we essentially sat there in the corner and kept reminding them while we were there, reminding them what they could do, reminding them who they were serving, and forcing them to go through this process step by step by step by step. We were trying to be unobtrusive, but we essentially just said, you have to keep doing this, this is your job, and we're going to do as much as we can to help you. The most important thing we learned in going through the process, which took three years, was that they were afraid. They were afraid of making mistakes. They were afraid of doing something stupid. They were afraid of being attacked by all the interests who weren't being well served by their own uh, analysis. And we were there essentially to say, don't worry, it's okay. We've got your back, uh, we'll protect you. And that's what they needed. So we sent a counselor to dozens and dozens of meetings. As you can see by this, we calculated out it was about 300 hours of council time. Uh, both with this particular original organizing group and with a variety of other stakeholders in the community on a casual basis and an organized basis. When we weren't in the room the one time, the whole thing fell apart. And when we came back, everybody was so happy we were there that it proved to us that we were going down the right path. We were there to persuade. We were there to cajole. We were there to push them. We were there to make them not forget what they had to do. It had nothing to do with us. This wasn't anything to do with any services that we could provide but it was our be a belief and our commitment that we had to make them do the work, and we did. We started with an incredibly broken process, which essentially had a whole bunch of different services, none of whom talked to each other, none of whom were coordinated, none of whom reached the people that really needed it. What we ended up with was a completely new design for delivering health services to the 150 or so hardest to reach people who live on our streets. It was a series of uh, different collections of coordinated and integrated service teams based in two physical plants, two hubs on both sides of the city, uh, one of which dealt with classic street services around harm reduction, one of which did uh, psychological and housing and other counseling. And the two hubs themselves, though interdependent, have different responsibilities. They're staffed not just by the health authority, but by contracted service people who come from the street, who are downtown service providers who have themselves been served by some of these services. And we have a situation now where the city is benefiting from the fact that the health authority, working with the partners that should have been working with all along, have finally come into the same room and produced a new way of delivering service together. This has only been open since January. Uh, we've already started to see incredible results. Uh, the numbers of people who are using the service have almost tripled, only in the first three or four months. The number of uh, police calls that we're being able to see uh, have dropped by the same amount. Uh, the police were at the table, the service providers were at the table, the users were at the table, the health authorities at the table, and the city was at the table. The most important part of this, funnily enough, was the city because the city decided that this was going to be a priority and they were not going to let go. This is the funny graphic that they like to put up. But essentially what it shows to you is that it's all now working together instead of being in 13 or 14 or 15 different silos. And for the city, this was a test. It was a test for us to see whether or not we could push people into doing something we knew we did, they didn't want to do. They didn't want to spend the money. They didn't want to spend the time. They didn't want to reorganize the way that they traditionally delivered services. But we know that it was a better way and now it's working. We have three different ways of watching it to make sure that it doesn't break down. 
There's an oversight committee that has the same interest that started with it, so the police, the city, the health authority, the service providers. There's an operations committee made up of healthcare professionals, both volunteer, nonprofit, and through the health authority. And there's also uh, an oversight committee that involves the users, which is really important. We know it's working. Uh, the client numbers are just through the roof. Uh, the costs that we're spending on dealing with maintenance and cleanup and park services and police starting to fall in a marked way. Uh, we're finally getting the users into the room to tell us whether or not we're doing it right, which is one of the gaps that we had in the beginning and we needed to fix and we'll do it again. Last week it was evaluated by all of these different players. It came out in the top 90th percentile from all the different evaluations around process and inclusion and outcomes so far. A couple of areas to improve, as I say, around uh, including people earlier in the process. But the most important thing for us is that people recognized around the table that this was the city's project. The city imagined it, the city brought it to the health authority, and the city doggedly pushed them for three years to get the job done. We had no right to do it, we had nothing to provide, we had no resources, we had no authority, we had no services, but we had conscience, catalyst, we had the belief that we were doing the right thing, and we believed that this was entirely within our duty of care, and we're gonna do it again now, outreaching to hard to reach youth. You can too. Thank you.